Hi, this is Mrs. O'Neill, and I'm going to read chapters 15 and 16 of Mr. Lemoncello's library. Everybody, please take your seats, Dr. Zinchenko said to the parents gathered in a conference room at the Parker House Hotel. When do our kids come home? asked one of the mothers. Rose has soccer at two, said another. The librarian nodded. Mr. Lemoncello will... Just then, an accordion paneled door at the far end of the room flew open, revealing the eccentric billionaire dressed in a bright purple tracksuit and a plumed pirate hat. He was eating a slice of seven-layer birthday cake. Good morning, or as they're currently saying in Reykjavik, Gotsijogi, which means good afternoon, because there is a four-hour time difference between Ohio and Iceland. A fact I first learned spinning a globe in my local library. Mr. Lemoncello, his banana shoes burp squeaking, stepped out of a room filled with dozens of black and white television monitors. The kind security guards watch at their workstations. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this grand and auspicious day. Today I am pleased to announce the most marvelously suspendous game ever created. Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's library. The entire library will be the game board. Your children will be the game pieces. The winner will become famous all over the world. How? asked one of the fathers. By starring in all of my commercials this holiday season. TV, radio, print, billboards, cardboard cutouts in toy stores. His or her face will be everywhere. Mrs. Daly raised her hand. Will they get paid? Oh, yes. In fact, you'll probably want to call me the giver. And what exactly does Haley have to do to win? Escape from the library. I thought the game's title more or less gave that bit away. Mr. Lemoncello tapped a button in his pirate hat and an animated version of the library's floor plan was instantly displayed on the conference room's plaza screen TVs. Whoever is the first to use what they find in the library to find their way out of the library will be crowned the winner. Now then, the children cannot use the front door or the fire exits or set off any alarms. They cannot go out the way they came in. They can only use their wits, cunning, and intelligence to decipher clues and solve riddles that will eventually lead them to the location of the library's super secret alternate exit. And ladies and gentlemen, I assure you, such an alternate exit does indeed exist. The parents around the table started buzzing with excitement. Participation, of course, will be purely optional and voluntary, said Mr. Lemoncello, clasping his hands behind his back and stalking around the room. Several parents pulled out cell phones. And please, do not attempt to phone, email, text, fax, or send smoke signals to your children encouraging them to enter the competition. We have blocked all communication into and out of the library. Only those who truly wish to stay and play shall stay and play. Anyone who chooses to leave the library will go home with lovely parting gifts and a souvenir pirate hat very similar to mine. They'll also be invited to my birthday party tomorrow afternoon. He held up his crumbled filled plate. I've been sampling potential cake candidates for breakfast. Mrs. Keegan crossed her arms over her chest. Will this game be dangerous? No, said Mr. Lemoncello. Your children will be under constant video surveillance by security personnel in the library's control center. Mr. Zinchen Dr. Zinchenko and I will also be monitoring their progress here in my private video viewing suite. Should anything go wrong, we have paramedics, firefighters, and a team of former Navy SEALs, each with the heart of a samurai, standing by to swoop in and rescue your children. It will be like the Hunger Games, but with lots of food and no bows or arrows. Why not just have the kids play one of your other games, a parent suggested. Why all this fuss? Because, my dear friends, these 12 children have lived their entire lives without a public library. As a result, they have no idea how extraordinarily useful, helpful, and funful, a word I recently invented, a library can be. This is their chance to discover that a library is more than a collection of dusty old books. It is a place to learn, explore, and grow. Mr. Lemoncello, 
I think what you're doing is fantastic, said one of the mothers. Thank you, said Mr. Lemoncello, bowing and clicking his heels, which made them brook like a chicken. If any of you would like to check up on your children, announced Dr. Zinchenko, please join us in the adjoining room. Oh, they're a lot of fun to watch, said Mr. Lemoncello. However, Mr. and Mrs. Keeley, I'm afraid your son Kyle does not enjoy the theme song, song from Rocky quite as much as I do. Rocky had done its job. Kyle and everybody else locked inside the library was definitely awake. Even Charles Chiltington had come down to the rotunda reading room from Mr. Lemoncello's private suite. The only essay writer not with the group was Sierra Russell, who, Kyle figured, was off looking for another book to read. We're still locked in, squealed Haley Daly. This is so lame, added Sean Keegan. It's like 1130. I've got things to do, places to be. Look, you guys, said Kyle, they'll probably open the front door right after we eat or something. Well, where's that ridiculous librarian, said Charles Chiltington, who was never very nice when there weren't any adults in the room. Yeah, said Rose Barnett. I can't stay in here all day. I have a soccer game at two. And dudes, said Sean Keegan, I have a life. Do you children require assistance? said a soft motherly voice. It was the semi-transparent holographic image of Mrs. Tobin, the librarian from the 1960s. She was hovering a few inches off the ground in front of the center desk. Yes, said Kayla Corson. How do we get out of here? The librarian blinked. The way a second-hand calculator, the one your oldest brother dropped on the floor a billion times, does when it's figuring out a square root. I'm sorry, said the robotic librarian. I have not been provided with the answer to that question. Will we be doing brunch here this morning? Chiltington asked politely. I'm not hungry, but some of my chums sure are. After all, it is 1130. The kitchen staff recently placed fresh food in the Book Nook Cafe. Thank you, Mrs. Tobin, said Chiltington. Would you like anything? A bowl of oatmeal, perhaps? No, thank you, Charles. I am a hologram. I do not eat food. I guess that's how you're staying so super skinny. Kyle shook his head. The swarmy guy was oilier than, oilier than a soggy sack of fries. He was even sucking up to a hologram. Chiltington and the others traipsed off to have breakfast, but Kyle and Akimi stayed with the holographic librarian. Um, I have a question, said Kyle. I'm listening. Is the library lock-in over? Are we supposed to go home now? Mr. Lemoncello will be addressing that issue shortly. Okay, thanks, Mrs. Tobin. You are welcome, Kyle. After the librarian faded to a flicker, Akimi said, by the way, Kyle, before we leave, you need to check out that room I slept in last night. The boardroom? Yeah, they call it that because guess what? It's filled with board games. All Lemoncellos? Nuh-uh, stuff from other companies. Some of it goes way back to the 1890s. I think it's Mr. Lemoncello's personal collection. It's like a museum up there. Kyle's eyes went wide. You hungry? He asked. Not really. We ate so much last night. You think we have time to check out this game museum? Follow me. The two friends bounded up the spiral staircase to the second floor, where they found another set of steps to take them up to the third. When they entered the boardroom, Kyle was blown away. Wow! The walls were lined with bookcases filled with antique games, tin toys, and card games. This is incredible. I guess, said Akimi, if, you know, you like games. Kyle smiled, which you know I do. They spent several minutes wandering around the room, taking in all the wacky games that people used to play. There was one display case featuring eight games with amazingly illustrated box tops. A tiny spotlight illuminated each one. Wonder what's so special about these games, said Kyle. Maybe those were Mr. Lemoncello's favorites when he was a kid. Maybe. But the slogan etched into the glass case confused Kyle. Luigi Lemoncello, the first and last word in games. But these aren't Lemoncello games, he mumbled. The first spotlighted game in the case was Howdy Doody's TV game. After that came Husker Do? You don't say. Like mine. Fun City, Big Six Sport Games, Get the Message.
message and rough and ready. It's a puzzle, Kyle said with a grin. I thought they were games. They are, but if you string together the first or last word in each game title, he tapped the glass in front of the first box on the bottom shelf. You get the message. Really? said Akimi, sounding extremely skeptical. You're sure it's not just a bunch of junk somebody picked up for like 50 cents at a yard sale? Positive. Kyle pointed to each box top, box top as he cracked the code. Howdy, do you like fun games? Get ready. Miguel Fernandez barged into the boardroom. Here you are. We need you guys in the Electronic Learning Center. Now. Why? Charles Chiltington wolfed down his breakfast, then raced up here to finish the game he started last night so he can enter his name as the first high scorer. So, the game he's playing is all about medieval castles and dungeons. This time, Akimi said it. So, he's escaping through the sewers. The game has smell vision You ever smell a medieval sewer? Trust me, it is foul and disgusting. The three of them dashed up the hall and entered the stinky room where Charles was sitting in a vibrating pedestal chair, thumbing his controller. As his avatar sloshed through the, a sewer pipe, the subwoofers built into his seat made every squish and splat rumble across the floor. Whoa, said Kyle. Knock it off, Charles. You're pumping out total tear gas because I'm in the sewers underneath the horse stables. It's the secret way out of the castle. I'm going to win another game. That's two for me, Keely. How many for you? Yo, said Miguel. This room is two stories above the cafe. The ductwork is connected. What's your point? You're making everybody's food downstairs, downstairs smell like horse manure. Who cares? I'm winning. Charles's chair went flump again, but this time Kyle smelled pine trees? Like one of those evergreen air fresheners people hang inside their cars. Ah, oh, this stupid thing is broken. Charles jumped out of the chair and reared back to kick it. Um, I wouldn't do that if I were you, said Kyle. Why not? Because there's a security camera over there and it's aimed right at you. What? Where? See the blinking red light? Suddenly, an image of Kyle pointing up at the camera lens appeared on every video screen in the Electronic Learning Center until he was replaced by Mr. Lemoncello.